Okay, here's the first interactive question. Age-based PSA screening reduces overall mortality. Because remember, that's what was done in ERSPC and PLCO. Yes or no? Age-based PSA screening reduces overall mortality. And we have uh, some yeses. Well, I think most people would say there's no way we're going to improve overall mortality because the fraction of the population that dies of prostate cancer is so small. Now, the controversial question, I think, would be this one. Age-based PSA screening reduces prostate cancer-specific mortality. And that's what the, the trials uh, were really addressing, not overall mortality, because they weren't powered to find a benefit in terms of overall survival. They were powered to find a, potentially a benefit in prostate cancer specific mortality. So let's vote on this one. Okay, yeah, this one probably is either yes or maybe. And it really uh, depends, uh, I think, on uh, how you look at the data. And uh, I, I saw this on Twitter, and this was uh, from Bertrand Russell about 100 years ago, and I think it applies exactly to prostate cancer screening. If a man is offered a fact which goes against his instincts, he'll scrutinize it closely, and unless the evidence is overwhelming, he'll refuse to believe it. If, on the other hand, he's offered something which affords a reason for acting in accordance with his instincts, he will accept it even on the slenderest of evidence. The origins of myths is explained in this way. And I think this is exactly, you could look at the PLCO and the ERSPC data and find exactly what you want in there. So, uh, you know, we've published the PLCO data uh, three times, uh, most recently uh, just uh, last year, and we continue to show absolutely no uh, prostate cancer specific mortality benefit with 15 years of follow up. There are many well-known limitations of the PLCO trial. Uh, there was significant pre-screening. Uh, during the seven years of screening, uh, there was 85% uh, compliance in the screened arm versus 42% contamination in the control arm. So it was a comparison of pretty aggressive screening versus partial screening. After the seven years of screening of PLCO was over, contamination rose steadily, and up to 90% of the patients ended up getting screened in the control arm. And, and the main other uh, point about PLCO is that the overall survival of these patients was much, much better than was anticipated when the study was designed. In fact, only half as many patients died after uh, 15 years as was anticipated would have died or otherwise endpointed so that you could have enough uh, endpoints. And these are just some of the well-known uh, data showing the escalating incidence of uh, contamination in the control arm. These are data uh, showing that uh, there were only half as many prostate cancer deaths uh, in uh, either arm uh, as was anticipated at the time. Uh, now, having said that those are legitimate criticisms of PLCO, there are some criticisms of PLCO that have been out there and that are improper. And, and one of them is, that there was a low biopsy rate and that because of this low biopsy rate, uh, we missed a chance uh, for cure. And, and the reality is that even though the population of PLCO was heavily pre-screened, and even though not every patient got a biopsy when his PSA was uh, elevated, notwithstanding that, the actual incidence, the, dis the discovery of prostate cancer was higher than it was in the screened arm of uh, ERSPC. And in fact, uh, you can see the main outlier was uh, the very low detection rate in the, uh, in the control arm of ERSPC. And the other point to argue against that is, is that that low biopsy rate was a problem, is that the overall uh, death rate from prostate cancer in both arms of PLCO was statistically significantly lower than the death rate of prostate cancer in the screened arm of ERSPC and certainly uh, about half of the death rate in the control arm of uh, ERSPC. So I, I do think that uh, that criticism is not, uh, is not a valid uh, criticism. Now, what about the ERSPC? This has been published uh, twice, uh, most recently in uh, 2015, and I guess that, that publication didn't show up. Just a little bit different than uh, PLCO. The main differences 
are the type of randomization uh, in ERSPC. It was often done at the population level. And uh, as a result of that, it turned out that if you were randomized to screening, you tended to get all of your biopsy decisions and your treatment decisions made at a urology center, whereas the patients in the control arm were treated in the community. And this was totally different than in the United States where, where all of the care was, was administered in the community, not in any of the uh, large centers. And so I would say there are some less well-known criticisms of PLCO. Uh, one of them was made uh, a number of years ago by uh, Peter Boyle and Otis Brawley uh, that they thought the type of analysis was improper. More recently, just uh, last year in the New England Journal of Medicine, as you know, there's a debate going on whether all data from clinical trials should be uh, uploaded uh, onto a web page and anyone who wants can analyze that data. Uh, some people are in favor of that, others are opposed to that. Well, the PLCO data has been uploaded and is freely available, but the ERSPC data have not yet been done that, uh, done so. Uh, there is um, uh, this 20% mortality was only observed in some of the countries, uh, and it does not include men of all ages who were screened. Not, it does not include all of the countries where screening uh, occurred. And you can see the forest plot from the original U.S. Preventive Services Task Force showing that it was only in Sweden and the Netherlands where there's a, a statistically significant reduction. The big problem was Finland because this Finland is the largest component of the ERSPC. It's actually larger than PLCO and it had uh, many more events in terms of prostate cancer deaths than uh, we did in the United States. 415 versus only 174 in the U.S. Uh, and it did not show any statistically significant reduction in prostate cancer mortality. I have some updated information on that later that I'll uh, show you. But I think one of the crucial problems in uh, the ERSPC is an artifact of the fact that patients who were screened were treated at major centers, whereas patients who were not screened were treated in the community. And this resulted in statistically significant treatment type when you looked at low risk, intermediate risk, or high risk uh, localized disease. And you just have to look um, at the high risk uh, population. And you can see, I can't read it from here, about 35% uh, of the patients uh, in the screened arm got a radical prostatectomy versus about 20%. On the other hand, uh, many more patients uh, in the uh, control arm received only hormonal therapy uh, than uh, were in the uh, screened arm. And uh, there now have been data uh, reported from Gothenburg showing uh, that unscreened men were 3.2 times as likely to receive only androgen deprivation therapy and, and about 50% less likely to get a radical prostatectomy. Uh, when you looked at the Rotterdam arm of ERSPC, you see the same thing. Control patients were more than twice as likely to get hormonal therapy. Screen patients were more than twice as likely to get a radical prostatectomy. And the treatments work. We know radical prostatectomy uh, works. And furthermore, treatment location uh, also differed. So screen patients were six times more likely to be biopsied and treated at a large academic center. They probably had better uh, radiation therapy if the man got radiation. Maybe they did a better radical prostatectomy. Maybe they got better adjuvant therapy because of aggressive uh, medical oncologists. Uh, not all of that has been, uh, has been quantified. And these were the data, and we heard an exhaustive talk on the uh, U.S. Preventive Services Task Force <clears throat> and, the, and the draft, which uh, the only difference uh, between uh, 2012 uh, is that uh, in 2012, they estimated between zero and one patient's life would be saved uh, after um, a decade of uh, screening. Now it's, uh, when you look at the mature data, one or two lives out of a thousand would be saved after a uh, decade of screening. Uh, a few months ago, uh, Ruth Itzioni and her group uh, from the University of Washington, the Fred Hutchison Cancer Center, uh, did a uh, reanalysis of uh, the PLCO and some of the ERSPC data and very sophisticated, well above uh, my pay grade. I don't understand everything that they did, 
but notwithstanding it, uh, on the basis of what uh, their modeling and microsimulation models that attempted to adjust for noncompliance for the men who were randomized to be screened who never got screened, for contamination in the control arm, and uh, uh, for uh, uh, behavioral patterns like that, translated into net estimates that there probably is a 25 to 30 percent uh, lower uh, chance of prostate cancer death uh, in both studies if you analyzed it, uh, you know, in this way. And here are, here are some of the graphs that they showed. So here's ERSPC when they do these adjusted mortality curves. You can see there's a fairly big difference between the uh, uh, screened arm and the control arm. The only thing I would say is that you got to look carefully at the y-axis. This is, ranges only from a 99% chance not to die of prostate cancer to a 100% <laughs> chance. So, so you have a lot of uh, statistically significant uh, difference, but it's because there's a large number of patients more than because the magnitude of benefit uh, was that large. And this was, these were data just taken out to 12 years. The studies are a, a little bit more mature. Um, there are some other uh, uh, things out there. Um, this is an uh, audience uh, interactive question. Are, what are the ways to make PSA great again? Could we vote on this one? There you go. Yeah, D is, I think D is the answer, and that's uh, really what most of the rest of the morning uh, here will be about. And the only reason I put that question in there is that there are now data coming out of both PLCO and ERSPC uh, you know, that are uh, relevant to these uh, issues. So here's something we published uh, late, uh, or about a year ago, I guess it is now, looking at the 4K score. Had we uh, used the, uh, had known about the 4K score and uh, used it, uh, and if we use the 7.5% cutoff that uh, OPCO suggests uh, for low risk, intermediate risk, and high risk, in PLCO, we would have avoided 55% of the biopsies. We would have missed a few of the aggressive cancers here in the green line. The better trade-off uh, for PLCO would have been at about a 5% uh, cutoff because you, admit, you, you um, wouldn't have missed quite as many of the uh, aggressive cancers. Uh, in PLCO, uh, we have a, a session going uh, at the AUA showing that uh, DRE still makes a difference when you look at men who develop metastatic disease in the PLCO trial, knowledge of their rectal exam status would have been helpful for that. Uh, in uh, ERSPC, uh, again, just published uh, last uh, summer, uh, they uh, pointed out that maybe the problem with Finland, remember that's the largest component of ERSPC, very high prostate cancer uh, uh, death rate, did not show a statistically significant benefit. Well, maybe that's explainable by the fact that, like PLCO, there's a rising rate of uh, contamination. 48% of patients at uh, eight years, 63% of patients at 12 years are getting contaminated and having PSA testing in the, in the control arm. And finally, from uh, ERSPC, uh, uh, the, uh, they looked at patients uh, who had had multiple screens and it had at least one previous negative biopsy. And, and they showed that a combination of uh, MRI and truss biopsy would have avoided about two-thirds of the biopsies and the low-grade prostate cancer diagnoses in the cohort. So, so that's pretty large-scale evidence that uh, MR, using an MRI after a negative biopsy seems to be beneficial uh, in uh, enhancing your ability to find aggressive cancer and lessening your ability to uh, discover uh, nickel and dime uh, Gleason 6 cancers. So uh, I would just conclude by saying that uh, if we keep doing the same things that we did in PLCO and ERSPC, screening will probably never be shown to be effective or be embraced. We just have to change what we're doing. I think it's fortunate that we are changing what we're doing. These are the four things that uh, if we really do them in a large scale, we'll make the data of PLCO and, and ERSPC irrelevant because we should now screen the correct men on the basis of age. We've been screening too old and family history and their genetic predisposition. We've generally not been doing any of that. We should use reflex tests before proceeding to biopsy if you consider a man's PSA to be abnormal. 
if you feel you need to do a biopsy, you should do a quality biopsy. Uh, I've changed this, uh, Alan, from hand job to hand done, 12 core biopsy. I think is completely suboptimal, and that MRI or transperineal biopsies are far better. And finally, if a cancer is detected, rather than proceed directly to treatment, we need to figure out better ways, and, and maybe the, and probably these genetic tests are going to be very helpful uh, to us. So anyway, thanks uh, very much. Thanks again to David and the group.